Sziasztok, köszöntünk szépen mindenkit, én Gore vagyok. A következő panel egy ö, színésszel lesz majd, már láthatatok pár ilyet. Úgy fog kinézni ez a beszélgetésünk is, mint a legtöbb, hogy angolul fog zajlani, viszont Attila előre is nagy tapsot tolmács kollégámnak egyébként szeretnék kérni itt Kosik Attilának a jobbomon. Ő fogja majd a kérdés válasz után lefordítani mindig magyarra, hogy éppen miről is beszéltünk az úrral. Akkor innentől kezdve pedig át is térek a másik anyanyelvünkre. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would like you to give a huge Hungarian warm welcome to a big fellow with an even bigger heart who ironically played one of the biggest villains in the movie history. So please welcome to the stage Mr. Spencer Lee Wilding. Come on, you can, you, you can do better than that. Come yeah, on. on. Woo. Oh, come on, you do better than that. Go on, ready? Woo! Hey. Very nice to meet you, sir. Nice to meet you too, man. So, obviously, I have to start this whole panel with this question because I'm always curious about these kind of things. Um, were you in the theater when Rogue One came out? And what was it like to experience everybody cheering for you? Well, basically you in the Darth Vader costume. What, what, what did it feel like? Well, I was, we were at the screen in, in, uh, in London. And uh, yeah, it was brilliant. The whole film was uh, awesome. You know, and uh, Gareth Edwards, the director, was, uh, he's a massive fan of the productions as well, the, of the series. And uh, yeah, it was good. Me and Daniel played the, played the part on the end scene. It was new to me, because Dan, that was Daniel's scene. And, uh, but it was just like, everybody want to see Vader do that. You know, that's what Vader is, you know? He's, just, he's the dark side, so let's see some dark side stuff. You know what I mean? Uh, az első kérdés arról szól, hogy uh, milyen érzés volt, látta-e uh, moziban a Rogue one és milyen érzés volt, amikor azt hallotta, hogy mindenki uh, éljen ez, mikor meglátja Vader-t, amint gonosz dolgokat csinál. Nos, uh, éppen Londonban voltam, uh, és Daniel együtt, aki szintén nagy rajongója a sorozatnak, uh, vele együtt néztük meg a filmet, és uh, igen, csodálatos érzés volt, jól gondolom, jól, érzem, jól érztük magunkat. Uh, úgy gondolom, hogy, hogy uh, a végén, amikor a, a, az utolsó jelenet volt, az nekem új volt, mert az Daniel csinálta. Így uh, azt hiszem, hogy, hogy uh, nekem is megnepelés volt, de roppant jól éreztem magam. Can I ask, how did that opportunity to play Darth Vader come to you? How did you find out that there is a casting call basically as Darth Vader? Or was it a secret casting call? How did, how did you land that role? Uh, it was obviously very secretive. You know, and uh, when when I landed that well, when I landed the audition for Star Wars, myself and my agency, we didn't even know what production it was. We got yeah, that's how secretive it was, and I was 36 films in. You know what I mean? So for for when my agent said we've got a we've got a self tape, come in, and I said oh great, what is it? And he goes oh, we don't know. I said what do you mean you don't know? You know we've been been filming now for 15 years, all these films, and we've never heard with. We don't know what it is. So he, got, he said, Spam, roll with it, come in. I said, okay. I said, well, what about the car? And we got, all we know, he's got authority. They want you to walk around with authority. He went, all right. So I just walked around like authority. Yep, cool. He rang me up again a few days later. said, right, we've got another call back. Okay, cool. What now? Right, okay, it is Star Wars, right? Okay, right, great. And um, again, we've got some lines. We've got some dialogue. But they're still they're, they're taking the character's name out. Okay, okay, cool. So I was walking around with authority, doing the dialogue, and I turned around to my agent and I said, "Hey, I've got a funny feeling this is Darth Vader." Because no, 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 it's not Darth Vader. No, no, no. Because why just say? Because I said at, at the end of each line, he's going. <laughs> no, didn't get it. No. Oh. Right out of the ball, that Actually, one. I wanted to ask if you had to practice some breathing or problematic breathing in before. Yeah, yeah, you know, when you, obviously, when you're playing a character that's been on the big screen before, we all know who he is, and you do get into that character, but then when the presence takes over you as well, it really does take over you, the dark side. So I remember on set, I was doing some additional dialogue. I was going, uh, don't be too sure that the Emperor is. But I was going on like that, and I was going... <laughs> And they were saying, don't worry about it, Spen, we'll put that in post later on. I was like, oh, I'm just getting into it, you know. It's funny. So what is the question, how did you get to the point where you got to 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 get
Ugyanis uh, amikor uh, megkaptam az, a lehetőséget, hogy egy meghallgatásra menjek, ezt föl kellett magamat venni videóra. Ekkor a, az ügynökömmel beszéltem, akivel 15 éve dolgozom együtt, ekkor már 36 filmen voltunk túl, és uh, az volt a feladat, hogy vegyenek fel engem videóra, mint uh, tekintélyes módon sétáló körbe-körbe. Megcsináltuk, felvettük, elküldtük, visszakaptuk. Uh, később kiderült az, hogy ez a, valójában a Star Wars lesz. Uh, <kül> Ekkor e, kaptunk néhány sort, amit fel kellett olvasni, és még mindig felsőbbrendűen kellett sétálni e, fel és alá. E, és ekkor mondtam az ügynökömnek, hogy van egy olyan érzésem, hogy ez, ez, itt, ez itt Darth Vader lesz. Nem, nem, az ügynököm nem értette, hogy miért. Mondtam, hogy azért, mert a minden sor végén azt mondja, hogy... E, de a helyzet az, hogy amikor e, elkerültem a film díszleteire, a, akkor e, a karakter jelenléte átveszi fölötted a hatalmat. És így aztán, amikor, uh, amikor el, elkezdtünk készülni rá, akkor mindenféle sötét erőtrükköket kezdtem el alkalmazni, illetve uh, elkezdtem uh, mindenféle um, párbeszédcsorokat rögtönözni, valamint uh, én is gyakoroltam a, a Darth Vader lélegzését, amire azt mondták nekem, hogy ne aggódj, ne aggódj, Spen, ezt majd betesszük posztprodukcióban, de mondtam, hogy nem, 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 én is akarom csinálni. Thank you very much, Attila. Um, and eventually, how did you find out that, okay, I got it, and was there anything special about the last audition or something like that? Yeah, because the uh, audition process went on for a few weeks, you know? So the, the final audition was at Pinewood Studios, and I filmed at Pinewood Studios on a Wolfman and several of the shows. And they said, Spen, so we, we, we got, uh, they got picked up with a driver, got talked to the studios, got out the car, And they took me up into, the, into one of the little secret rooms that I've never been before. And inside the room was the tent, right? And this audition was going to be a, a, a green tick that you got the part or a cross, no, you know? So they pulled back the curtains and there was the helmet, the boots, the gloves, the pants, you know? And it was weird. It wasn't like I was just looking at a costume. The character was looking at me and I was looking at the character. And we were both sussing each other out. And, you know, it's literally, it was like Cinderella if the boots fit. So I chopped my toes off and I put the foot down. But I, I got my feet in there and everything, everything fit. And then all of a sudden, I felt the true presence of Darth Vader. He was in the room with me. So I knew when he took over me, I thought, right, this is a good sign. Now, you know, the Emperor wants us, so I'll get my own Death Star, I can choke out my brother from different cities, I get my own lightsaber. So yeah, that, you, you so, had a, that was you, it. You had a really fun time with it, absolutely. Yeah, of course, you know. But he's a very serious character, you know. I always mess about on set with my characters. You know, it's like my front room, I love it. And, uh, but every time I tried to mess about when I was in the suit, Darth Vader would not let me mess about. He, was, he put me in, you know, that's it. He was like, all right. You know, and he's the most iconic bad guy on silver screen. Before I landed that role, I went, all right, he's all right, you know what I mean? But when the presence taken over me, the atmosphere changed the room, I went, all right, I get it. All right, I'll do as I'm, I'll do as I'm told, you know what I mean? Sorry. Szóval, uh, és hogy tudtad meg, hogy megkaptad a szerepet? Nagyon egyszerű, a, a Paramounthoz hívtak fel, hívtak el, akikkel már több filmet is csináltam, például a Farkas ember és elmentem a stúdióba, felvittek valami nagyon titokzatos szobába, és ott volt a sátor. És ez egy olyan meghallgatás volt, amire, hogyha vagy megkapod, vagy nem pipa, vagy piros kereszt. Úgyhogy hátra elhúzták a sátor lapjait, és ott volt a sisak, ott volt a lábvért, ott volt a páncél, ott volt a, kabá, ott volt a köpeny. És azonnal éreztem a, a karakter jelenlétét, és igazából nem a kosztümre néztem, hanem a karakter nézett rám, Véder nézett rám, én pedig Véder, és, és egymást szemléltük, és próbáltuk ki tud, megtalálni a egymás gyenge pontjait. E, és én olyan ember vagyok, aki nagyon szeretem jól érezni magam a, a díszletben, a fogadás közben, de Véder nem ilyen, Véder nem szórakozik. Így aztán nagyon komolyan kellett viselkedni. Ez az érdekes kettőséget hozott a filmben. So. You are a huge. Uh, you have a huge experience in, you know, as a prosthetic actor who puts on a lot of costumes and different prosthetics and 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 turns into something completely else. 
and you were a Vol White Walker, I think, on Game of Thrones. You were a Hagrid double. And one of my favorite role of yours was the mean guard in Guardians of the Galaxy. He was the one who steals um, Peter Quill's headphones and Walkman, basically, who, who ends up getting uh, punched for that. What was the longest and most problematic role, you know, costume, prosthetic, or anything like that you had to put on, and, and how long did it take? Well, uh, I'll just go to the beginning of the Harry Potter world because I've got a good relationship with the Harry Potter world because my first ever role... Do you know the Prisoner of Azkaban? You know the werewolf? That's a bit of my handy work, that. I was inside that costume and I doubled Hagrid for a few days to help them out and then played one of the knights in Deathly Hallows Part 2 and I played Greyback and Death Eater in the Harry Potter Wizards Unite game, Warner Brothers. That's cool, isn't it? And I used to give... I used to give kit potting lessons to Daniel when he was 14 years old. Me and Alan Rickman sang happy birthday to him, you know. He was such a sweetheart and he's remained such a sweetheart because I worked with Daniel again 10, 15 years plus later on uh, Victor Frankenstein. Have you, any, have you seen Victor Frankenstein? Do you know my character in Victor Frankenstein? Re really, do you? Oh, cool. So that's cool. So I played two characters in Victor Frankenstein. So I played the strong man in the circus and I played the monster. Yeah, the longest makeup I've ever been. Have you ever heard of a, a makeup guy called Rick Baker? Yeah, he's, you know, seven, he, you know. He was, uh, did all the makeup on uh, the American Wear of London and Nutty Professor, he's done everything. So the first test makeup was on the Wolfman, yeah? I was down as uh, Benicio Della Toro's stunt double, I was helping him out with the movements and I ended up playing most of the character. Um, but that was for 11 hours. 11 hours. I got cramp in the bum and everything. I was like, so, yeah. But, the, you know, long makeups like um, uh, I played one of the orcs in uh, Lord of the Rings, Shadow of War, Friend or Foe. That's a six hour makeup. Have you seen Wrath of the Titans? Clash of the Titans 2, I was the Minotaur. So, four Titans, three of them were CGI, one was makeup. Um, so, that was a Minotaur, and that was a six, seven hour makeup. So, yeah, long, long, long makeups. But I find it very relaxing, you know? Very relaxing to sit in a chair and go to sleep for six hours, you know? And if the makeup artist wants a, uh, you know, an expression, they'll just poke you in the face to wake you up. You know what I mean? It's one of them. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, ismert vagy arról, hogy, hogy uh, rengeteg maszkot uh, és kiegészítőket használsz. Volt-e uh, olyan, ami uh, igazán emlékezetes volt, hiszen játszottad például Hagridnak voltál a, a kaszkadőre, voltál White Walker a trónok harcában, a, és a, illetve a, a galaxis őrzőiben te voltál a gonosz őr, aki ellopta, ellopta Peter Quill e, fülhallgatóját és walkmanjét. E, az a helyzet, hogy, hogy e, a legérdekesebb talán, a, talán a, a Harry Potter világgal kezdeni, mert nagyon-nagyon jó kapcsolatom van belük, nagyon szeretem őket, hiszen például benne voltam az Aszkabani fogolyban is, a másokban is, adtam kickbox leckéket Daniel Radcliffe-nek, Ellen Rickman-nel felköszöntöttük a 14. születésnapján, illetve játszom a Viktor Frankensteinben is összesen két szerepet, egy erőemberét, illetve a szörnyetegét, de a, ami a leghosszabb make up illeti, az talán Rick Bakerrel dolgoztam együtt a, a farkas emberrel, a wolfman amikor Benicio Del Toro uh, kaszkadőre, kaszkadőre voltam, az egy 11 óra hosszú uh, folyamat volt. Uh, játszottam Orkot uh, egy gyűrűk játékban, az 6 órás make volt, illetve a Titánok haragjában, a, a Titánok harcának a második részében Minotaurus voltam, ez 7 óra hosszat tartott, de az a helyzet, hogy ezt igazán megnyugtatónak, kipihentetőnek tartom, az ember alszik egy 6 órát, és hogyha a maszkmester azt szeretné, hogy valamit csinálják, csak arcom bök, föl kellek és csinálom, amit kér. You obviously have a lot of experience back as a uh, stunt performer, and of course you have a sports background. And I wanted to ask you about stunts in general. What do you feel about, how do you feel about stunts changing nowadays? Like, are we demanding more of stunt performance? Do you need to push yourself uh, harder, you and, of course, your colleagues as well. So do you feel that it's getting tougher and tougher in the day or it's basically the same same industry like you entered like 15 or 20 years ago? Yeah, um, well, I'm an, I'm an actor that'll do my own stunts. 
So to be called a stunt performer, that's an honor for an actor to be called that because stunt performers are the elite at the at stunts, at acting, at everything, you know? So, but I'm a big guy, I'm six foot seven, six foot eight, and I can move well because I was a kickboxer, you know? So they didn't have many guys in the industry, especially stunt performers, as big as me, but I could still move well. So, uh, but I, they, they knew what I could do, and they, I just said, listen, I'll do whatever you want me to do, just don't kill me, because I haven't got a, I'm not that sort of experience to, I'm not a, uh, you know, a, a, an acrobat or anything like that, them skills they have, they're like professional in six, six sports. But I was, on the Wolfman, I was jumping 100 feet off the Greenwich Naval College, you know, being pulled up onto the omnibus, and I was like, I'd never done it before. We just rehearsed on tape. It was just crazy, but we got it done, we got it did, and I was enjoying myself. I was a, I was a big kid, you know, so, uh, yeah. And the stunts, uh, you know, the, they will use live performers. There's some amazing stunt coordinators out there with, with the abilities to make the magic happen, you know? Instead of putting a CGI car going, woo, with a guy in it, they'll do it for real, you know? But they'll rehearse and rehearse and rehearse and rehearse so nobody gets hurt, you know? A stunt performer, they don't want anybody getting hurt, you know, they're, they're, they're very special people, so you don't want to get them hurt. But um, I'm not, the CGI, it is important for certain things, because obviously if they want a stunt performer that just can't do it or it is too dangerous, then use CGI, do you know what I mean? But it's all about the money, honey, isn't it? So. Um. Kaskadőr vagy voltál, mi a véleményed arról, hogy a manapság keményebbnek kell dolgozni a kaszkadőröknek, vagy ez ugyanolyan uh, helyzetben vannak, mint voltak 10-15 évvel ezelőtt? Az a helyzet, hogy a stunt performerek az elitnek számítanak, ők, ők is tudnak trükköket csinálni, színészkedni mindent. Én 6 láb 8 hüveg magas voltam, vagy vagyok, illetve kickboxer, úgyhogy egy nagy darab pasas vagyok, rengeteg mindent tudnak, csinálni, tudnak használni. És ezt is mondtam mindig az, emberek, az embereknek, hogy bármit megcsinálok, csak ne üljetek meg, Léci. Nem vagyok akrobata, nem úgy, mint apám. Itt mindenféle őrületet csinálhatunk a, 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 ezekben a jelenetekben. Ezeket néha szinte a felvételkor próbáltuk el egyből. A, a helyzet az, hogy vannak kitűnő kaszkadőr koordinátorok, akik elképesztő varázsatot tudnak értekelteni a vásznon, CGI nélkül, de persze van olyan helyzet is, amikor a, amikor a kaszkadőr valamit nem tud megcsinálni, vagy túlságosan veszélyes, olyankor persze CGI-t készítenek, de az egész a pénzről szól. Nyilván egyes esetekben olcsóbb megcsinálni valamit CGI-jal, néha pedig drágább. Thank you very much. Now that we are getting into your roots, How did you end up in this industry? What was your first role? How did you start basically this whole, you well, know, acting part I, of your life? Yeah, I'm very spiritual, very spiritual. And I, I had a dream, like all of us. I'm sure everybody had a dream when they were a kid. And then they just lose the dream or they, they, don't, they find it very hard to catch. And they just go to a normal job. There's nothing wrong with being a normal job, you know. I've done every job out there before I got to live my dream, you know. Um, but when I was a kid, I had my thoughts in my head, and I wanted to be an actor, you know? Uh, how am I going to be, because I used to love the fall guy and equalizer, and I just wanted to be like them, you know? So a little voice came back to my head, said, right, okay, you're going to be a champion kickboxer, boxer, and you're going to be a guy in the audience with a big fat cigar going, they want to be in the movies. He wasn't there, you know, obviously, but when I took the Welsh and British title in kickboxing, I got signed up with a sports agency up in London, And then later on down the line, I got a more of an acting agent. And, but the first thing they sent me for was Snatch. Have you heard of the film Snatch? Well, the, the little short big guy called Tommy, they wanted me to play him. But uh, have you heard of dyslexia? Right, I am very dyslexic. So at the age of 32 years old, I couldn't read or write. So I found my theory later on in life. Now I'm, I'm fine. I can read well. And I hold me on with the big boys. And then lots of dialogue. But... Um, Back then, I went to three more studios, not, not able to read or write. So I was, trying, I was reading this dialogue they gave me, like a five-year-old would ring, read Thomas the Tank Engine, you know? So I was in a really awkward part of my... But it was all a big test. Get through this, get through this, get through this. And then a year went past when I didn't get any phone calls off my agent. And I thought, they got on to it, they know I can't read, I'll stick with my fighting, you know? But then I got... Warner Brothers were looking for a six foot seven actor 
they were saying on the radio stations they were looking for the actor. I thought they're, look, they're looking for me. I know they are. They're looking for me. And um, they wanted a six foot seven performer to play the werewolf in the Prince of Azkaban. And 20 years ago, Harry Potter was crazy, right? So I, I ring my agency up and I said, am I still signing you guys? And they said, oh, yes, we've just been very busy. Uh, I went, all right, I get it. You know, I get it. Um, but Warner Brothers are looking for a six foot seven actor to play the werewolf. Can you get me the audition? Because it's a professional audition. You can't just walk in off the streets. Okay, we'll, make, we'll get, make a phone call. Straight away, they bring me straight back. And they're dead excited. We got you the phone call. We got the phone call. We got the audition. You're, you're going to be at um, Leverson Studios tomorrow morning which is the Harry Potter world now. But back then it was just the studios. Now it's uh, half, half of it's uh, an active studio and the other half is the Harry Potter world. And as soon as I got there, I just knew it was my world and, and I had three auditions over three weeks and myself and Monitz van der Broek got the part to play the werewolf. And then it was, a, I, it was like I'd been lost and now all of a sudden I was back with my family. And then it just took off. 50 films later, I'm still here with you guys doing Q&As, meeting all the fans. I love you guys, and it's awesome that you take time out of your... Time is very special. So to give up your time to follow us a lot, it's beautiful. Thanks very much. Beszélnél az első szerepedről, amit megkaptál. Én meglehetősen spirituális ember vagyok, de mindig volt egy álmom, amit szerettem volna megvalósítani. És persze ahhoz, hogy az álmot lehessen táplálni, csináltam mindenféle mindennapi munkát, és azzal sincs semmi gond. Aztán végül úgy döntöttem, hogy mivel szerettem volna akciófilmekben szerepelni, úgy döntöttem, hogy elmegyek boxolni, kickboxolni. És amikor bajnok lettem, akkor elkezdtem gondolkodni azon, hogy vissza szeretnék menni a, 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 a filmek világába. Az első lehetőség a, a Bluffből e, jött, ahova behívtak, de nagyon-nagyon erősen diszexiás vagyok. 33 éves koromban nem tudtam írni, olvasni. Úgyhogy amikor odaadták a párbeszélet, akkor olyan volt, mintha a, a egy öt évesnek adtatok volna valami bonyolultabb könyvet. Úgyhogy elment egy év anélkül, hogy bárki bármire hívott volna, és aztán kiderült, hogy rádióban lehetett hallani azt, hogy a Warner Brothers egy hat láb hét hüvelyk magas színész keres, mint később kiderült az Aszkabani fogolyban a farkas ember szerepére. 20 évvel ezelőtt a Harry Potter hatalmas dolog volt, és így is, én is ezt akartam csinálni. Felhívtam az ügynökömet, aki azt mondta, nem, 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 Spen, ez egy nagyon komoly meghallgatás, telefonálunk előtte, azonnal visszahívtak. Három hét, alatt, három, hét alatt, három hét alatt három meghallgatáson voltam túl a, a mostani Harry Potter Worldben, ami akkoriban még csak stúdió volt, és végül megkaptam a, a Fakas Ember szerepét. És most itt vagyok, 50, 50 filmmel később, veletek vagyok, és csodálatosnak érzem azt, hogy itt lehetek veletek, ti pedig az időtöket adjátok azért, hogy engem hallgassatok, és ez fantasztikus. Thank you very much again. He's good, he's good, isn't he? He's good. Yep. I'll be lost after the first three words. What did he say? I'll be drawing pictures. MVP, MVP for the whole weekend, basically. Okay. <laughs> um, we have some time for a little Q&A section. Anyone wants to ask questions from Mr. Yep, Ooh. yep. Here you go, in the first row. And you have a, you have a microphone as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, it's so nice to see you here in Budapest. Thank Thanks for you. having me. What's your name? Tuska Zoltán, Zoltán. Tuska Fuska, I know it, I got it. Tuska Fuska, Fuska, gone. Easy, easy. easy. And uh, I would like to ask you about uh, that you play the role in the Hitchhiker's Guide in, uh, yeah. to the Galaxy. And uh, how was it? I mean, it's a comedy classic and I would really like to know that was it like, uh, you know, the, the whole process? It, it was behind the scene, it was as funny as as us funny as it was, you know, for us. Sam Rothwell, very funny, very funny actor, you know. And to be working with him. But that was my, at the time, I was working on Batman Begins and Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. It was a double bubble for me, you know. So I was jumping off that set, going to that set, different studio, this in studio. And like I said, I couldn't read it well in the beginning. So I didn't know anything about Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. You know, the guy, the, the book was apparently as, as busy as the Bible. You know, it was very, very well known, right? But I played Vogue on Soldier number one. I'm the one that pushes him, I think resistance is futile. And I was the stupid one, I was thinking, I wonder if this 
giant jacket potato can do a somersault over the bush. You know, I just like, I like to throw me at it. And they, and they put a little monitor. Uh, two of us had little monitors. There was 20 Vogon soldiers. Two of us had little tellies in our, in our costume. And I was like, yeah, I've got a telly in mind. Do you know what I mean? But after about a few weeks, I realised that telly was giving off a lot of heat. <laughs> so I remember the first time so basically it is the Vogon soldiers like a giant jacket potato, right? And you've got a little seat inside and you stand up like that and you put all the weight on your shoulders and you, get, and you, and you move around like this, right? That's, a, that's a, the very soldiers, aren't they? So I remember I'd been in it about five or six hours and I was cooking. I was like sitting in a sauna. I'm like, Phew. it felt like I was pro boxing training for 12 hours a day. I remember the lady, one of my uh, helpers, she lifted, because it opens up from the middle, so she lifted up going, are you all right? And she got to, you all right? And, and the steam hit her and put her on the floor. I was like, how do you think I feel? You know what I mean? I'm living in this. You know what I mean? So it was good. It's great. It was, I loved, for, you know, working. And the, the audition process, I was always a little bit different, you know? So they had a, a hundred guys in a room marching around without the suit on marching around doom, 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 being Vogon soldiers I was going like that I was going walking around and I went I don't want to go that way I'm going to go this way so there was one Vogon soldier that was walking the other way around and everybody, everybody then he all started to follow me you know what I mean so I was like I was setting off little trends but it was really really funny and it was a great film to work on and thank you for asking about Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy because it's normally always about the Harry Potters or the Wolfman or Star Wars so Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy amazing show did you enjoy it? I'm going to watch it again tonight now, you said, you put it back in my head. Thank you for the, thank you for the question. Uh, so, a kérdés úgy hangzott, hogy milyen volt a galaxis ütikalus topposoknak uh, filmen dolgozni. Mint kiderült, Spencer az egyes számú Vogon katonát használ, uh, szerepét játszotta, és akkoriban volt éppen a, a Batman, a Danevér ember kezdődikben is dolga, így aztán uh, uh, föl is alá kellett cserélni a munkáit. De a helyzet az, hogy egy szép nagy szép nagy kosztümben volt, ami úgy nézett ki, mint egy Jack Crumpley, és mivel ő kapott egy tévét is, hogy jól nézzen ki benne, ez meglehetősen felmelegítette a helyzetet, úgyhogy amikor 5-6 órát töltött benne, és néha néha kinyitották neki a kosztümöt középen, akkor olyan volt, mintha egy gőzfürdőben ült volna. De imádta. Thank you. And one last quick question, because I, I really enjoy this. Yep, the lady in front. Oh, Slytherin. Best house, to be yeah, honest. The dark side. Thank you and welcome to Budapest. Your career is very experienced while you played so many characters, so many wonderful worlds like Harry Potter, Guardian of Galaxy, Star Wars. I'm a big, big, I big, uh, big fan of Star Wars with my mom too. Hi, mom. <laughs> your mom is very beautiful. I thought it was your older sister. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> and, uh, I would like to questions if you any career of any time do you think of with any little tiny pieces still from on set but no comment <laughs> no but i remember right because i wasn't a guy the kid had been through acting school so i'd never been it was, i was just i'm still enjoying myself now and i've been in the game 20 years and 50 shows but i remember the first day walking around on set at Harry Potter, right? I was picking up rubbish off the floor like a, a broken twig going, it's off Harry Potter saying that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Honestly, I was like, ah. I remember the hippogriff, remember the hippogriff? Well, they made Nick Dudman's crew, they spent like a million pound making that character, you know? And then he CGI'd it. But it was, um, but obviously they needed the reference from the real Real hippogriff, where they found it, I don't know, it was a real one. Anyway, there was a feather on the floor. They don't know this, but just, it was just a feather, just a feather. So I picked up the feather, and my granddad passed away a few years after filming Harry Potter, and um, I put that feather in the picture with my granddad, so he stays there. And that was my first film, so it was very special, and he's still there, he's still there in the picture. It was beautiful. We're all about the family, right? Szóval a kérdés az, hogy volt -e esetleg bármilyen apróság, amit, amit eltüntetett uh, valamelyik uh, díszletből, valamelyik forgatásról. 
A válasz pedig az, hogy Spencer nagyon-nagyon szeretett a Harry Potter filmeken dolgozni, így aztán volt, hogy apró törött gajakat vett fel, hogy ez még mindig a Harry Potterről származik. De a lényeg, hogy volt a hipogrif, amit a, a maszmesterek egy, egy millió, millió fontért csináltak, aztán pedig az egészet CGI-ba modellezték, de talált egy tollat, amit végül is ellopott, elvitt magával, és amikor néhány évvel a, a, filmforgatás, a film megjelenése után a, a nagymamája elhunyt, akkor beletette egy képkedbe a nagypapájával, hogy úgy tűnjön, mintha még mindig együtt lennének. And I think that's absolutely a nice way to end this conversation, although I really wanted to continue it with, but time just run out. So yeah. thank you really thank very, you. very much for joining uh, us here uh, on the very first Budapest Comic Con. Yeah. Well, And you know, I would like to give a big, huge yeah. round of applause for Mr. Spencer yeah. Levi. Thanks, please. guys. Thanks for having me. Let's hope for peace, right? Okay. Thank you.